Welcome to Wisdom Trek with Gramps. I am Guthrie Chamberlain and we are on day 2386 of our trek. The purpose of Wisdom Trek is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, and to boldly grow if few has chosen to grow before. Today is the sixth lesson in our segment of Theology Thursday, utilizing excerpts from the book titled I Dare You Not to Bore Me with the Bible, written by Hebrew scholar and professor, the late Dr. Michael S. Heiser. We will invest a couple years going through the entire Bible, exploring short biblical lessons that you may not have received in Bible classes or church. The Bible is a wonderful book. Its pages reveal an epic story of God's redemption of humankind and the long bitter conflict with evil. Yet it is also a book that may seem strange to us at times. While God's word was written for us, it was not written to us. Today our lesson is The Abandoned Child and the Basket Case. In modern stories, people destined for greatness rarely start as privileged. They are dropped off at the doorstep of an orphanage and abandoned in the rain. This literary motif goes back to ancient stories where the writers use an abandoned child theme to identify a character that rises from obscurity to the privileged hero status. It's a motif found in the biblical account of Moses' birth. But is that really the whole story? Moses' story begins when Pharaoh feels threatened by the growing Hebrew population in Egypt and commands that all Hebrew male infants be killed. In Exodus chapter 1, verses 16 through 22. Moses' mother hides her newborn son for three months and then devises a risky but calculated plan. She sets him adrift in the Nile in a small basket made of bulrushes, waterproof with buttmen and pitch. And then Moses' older sister Miriam watches the basket floats to where the daughter of Pharaoh bathes. God uses these circumstances to bring Moses under the protection of Egypt's ruler in Exodus chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. Ancient literature outside the Bible reveals several stories in which a child is perceived to be a threat by the enemy, in which it is abandoned and later spared by divine intervention and in otherworldly circumstances. Roughly 30 stories like this survive the ancient Mesopotamian, Canaan, Greece, Egypt, Rome, and India literature. The Mesopotamian work is known as a Sargon birth legend, and it offers the most striking parallels to the biblical stories. It relates the birth story of Sargon the Great, an Akkadian emperor who ruled several Sumerian cities around 2000 BC, centuries before the time of Moses. The infant boy was born of great peril. His mother is a high priestess and he is illegitimate. Consequently, his mother sets him adrift in a reed basket in the river. The boy is rescued and raised by a gardener named Akai in a town of Kish. He becomes a humble gardener in Akai's service until the goddess of Ishtar, takes an interest in him, setting him on the path to kingship. Some assume that the biblical story of Moses was based on Sargon's birth legend, but that is very unlikely. Although ancient Sumerian accounts of Sargon the Great date back to his lifetime, the legendary account of his birth is known from only four fragments of tablets, three from the Neo-Assyrian period of 934 to 605 BC, and one from the Neo-Babylonian period from 626 to 539 BC. During the Neo-Assyrian period, the Assyrian king took the name of Sargon II and likely commanded the legends to be written about his namesake in 722 to 705 BC. By doing so, he would have linked himself to an ancient hero and glorified himself as a revived Sargon figure. This would suggest that the birth legend was compromised from propaganda purposes well after the biblical stories of Moses. The existence of stories like the Sargon birth legend helps us to understand the biblical narrative. They show that the abandoned child theme was a popular literary strategy for the ancients. They used to introduce figures who would rise from the mundane origins after gaining favor from fate or the divine. The common elements of this rag to riches story helped ancient audience identify with the central figure and develop respect for his achievements. Moses' story is more about parallels, though. While Moses briefly seems to find favor and protection in the household of Pharaoh, a quasi-divine figure for the Egyptians, His life takes a surprising turn. He ends up leaving the kingdom of Egypt, fearing that Pharaoh would kill him. From there, the story is repatterned. In the wilderness of Midian, Yahweh appears to Moses, now an obscure shepherd, slow of speech and of tongue, as Exodus chapter 4 verse 10 tells us. Yahweh tells Moses to act as his spokesperson before Pharaoh and lead his people out of Egypt. Moses stands out against the stories of the ancient cultures because he isn't promoted as their chosen figures, but saved and demoted to poverty so that he can lead others to salvation. He is a new archetype of the chosen hero, one who is promoted only for the benefit of others. Over and against the stories of worldly kingdoms, Moses' story articulates God's remarkable work for his kingdom. 
His values are different from ours, as is often the case in retrospect, and we can be very grateful for that. The lessons that make up the Theology Thursday segments on our Wisdom Trek podcast for the next couple of years will satisfy the statement, I dare you not to bore me with the Bible. And I trust that you'll enjoy them and, of course, not be bored. If you found this podcast insightful, please subscribe and leave us a review. Then encourage your friends and family to join us and come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, and most importantly, I am your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. As we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. See you next time for more Daily Wisdom.